Welcome to That's What She Said with Kimberly Love. We have a bunch of amazing guests coming on this season one, and we're just launching it out and hoping that you guys love what we do and want to come around. So today I have on the show Candace Smiley, and she is a mom, blogger, and social marketer essentialist. And we're going to find out what that is. So welcome to the show, Sydney. Or sorry, <laughs> Candace. Thank you so much for having me, Kimberly. I'm so happy that you're here. Now, we usually go into journey stories, but I'm just going to read off something that I read in your biography, and I think it's going to give everybody an idea of not only what you've been through, but who you are. So you say, 20 years ago, I survived sexual assault. 14 years ago, I decided to not kill myself. 11 years ago, I was left with $350,000 in bad debt. Nine years ago, I had a Me Too moment. Mm -hmm. Seven years ago, I welcomed a beautiful daughter into the world. Five years ago, I left my marriage and fell in love with myself. Three years ago, I allowed myself to heal. Two years ago, I rebuilt my life, moved into a new home, and found your lifetime love, right? Mm -hmm. Last year, you started a podcast and welcomed a new baby boy. So, yes. wow. <laughs> I know every time I, I like write it out or read it out, I'm like, oh my gosh, like, you know, girl, you made it. <laughs> oh my God. I can't even tell you how much I relate to your story. And I mm -hmm. guarantee you there's probably hundreds of women watching this right now saying the exact same thing. Mm -hmm. You know, I was with a narcissist for many years. I've been in an abusive relationship. I, you know, I've been cheated on about 47 times. It's yep. just like a roller coaster ride. And then when you finally leave, it's almost like, what the hell do I do now? <laughs> yes. Right? Yes. And then you got to, like you said, build back up to who you're supposed to be, who you were before all this happened, or even mm -hmm. a fresh new version of yourself. So mm -hmm. I guess for starters, Candice, let's, let's talk about the how you did it. Well, I think it was a, you know, I didn't want, you know, when the things happened, I didn't want to give up because I didn't want them to win. That was just a huge mm -hmm. um, energy that I felt, right? And I felt like if I can't find the silver lining in this or something that I can turn to a positive, then I was honestly just mad that I was going through it. And so for me, it was almost like this mission to be like, what is the good that I can pull out of this so I can move into the next level and find the lesson in, in all of the awful that was happening. So that was a really big part of the how I think you know I did the typical therapy and I did that throughout my journey you know I sort of stumbled my way forward through all of that I like to tell people all the time like you're not going to be healed overnight from any of these things and if it took you years right. to get right to that thinking that continues to attract these these narcissist partners or these mistakes you keep making it's probably going to take you a few years to break the habits to get out of them and change the thinking so you know I had various therapists I did various you know personal development you know, a habit that I've had all the way through, to be honest with you, though, is journaling. And so, mm. you know, I was always honest with myself, even if I wasn't being honest with the rest of the world, which is, is challenging when you're sort of dominated by, by shame. Yes. Oh, that's a great point. That's the thing. Yeah. Like so many women, especially if you've experienced domestic violence in any way, mm. that's the thing is like sometimes they won't ask for help because they feel stupid they feel stupid oh, yeah. like how did i get here i don't know how to get out of here and of course then they're also dealing with the people that are like what are you doing in there like why are mm -hmm. you staying with him which mm -hmm. just it just makes it this vicious cycle of okay well i have no one to support you i don't know what i'm doing and yeah maybe i am an idiot like i certainly felt that <laughs> when i was and that's the thing like people don't think that strong women can get in abusive relationships. Thank you. I was going to say, right? I'm like, you know, I look in the mirror and think you're very smart, intelligent, you know, you're mm -hmm. beautiful. How the heck did you get here? And so I think it's that inner dialogue because, you know, to be honest, when people ask the word like, well, how did you get there? Or why did you date him? I really had to learn to transition that from the accuse. you know, it sounded very accusatory when people originally asked me, which actually forced me further underground to not talk about it. Yes. But to be honest, I've come to realize that that's people asking because they don't want to end up in the same spot or they're thinking about that's their niece, their cousin, their daughter. Yeah. And they want to be able to share the story and say, I heard from this girl today and she got into this mess and this is what happened. And so I've learned to hear that not as the accusation, but as an opportunity for me to share my story and yes. how, <laughs> how I got there. 